Welcome back to Mobility Project. We are at the Home Torture Edition, working on uh, working on the big project. And one of the things that we're we're always working on is tweaking how do how do we improve position, right? So one of the one of the key aspects is that when we see athletes missing internal shoulder rotation, one of the things that happens is that the shoulder has to compensate. And as soon as my scapula flips forward, all bets are off. In fact, do this little hand lift off test for yourself. I put my shoulder back in the socket, rib cage in and down. And I can see what my true kind of rotator function looks like. This is a combined movement. It's an interrotation extension movement. I should be able to lift off in the back. But if my shoulder comes forward because I'm missing interrotation, this is how I'll compensate. This is the mechanism for slap tear, destroyed labrums, frying your biceps tendon. Now, I literally, this is all I got. I just don't function very well. We see this all the time, that poor positioning leads to poor function. That's my interrotation. I'm overextended. Rib cage comes in and down, clears up. So this is the soft tissue edition, and one of the first things I do in my clinic is that when I see athletes who are missing internal rotation, I attack this anterior delt. One of the things that happens is that if I'm missing shoulder rotation, the shoulder comes forward and the anterior deltoid, which is one of the ones that just causes so much pain and dysfunction. Biceps tendon, by the way, is all the way over here in the, the bicipital groove, but this anterior delt gets really short and ropey, and if you just kind of palpate back and forth, you're going to be shocked at how ropey and nasty it is comes in too, we catch some of the biceps, that brachialis, and uh, went into corcobrachialis. I get really short in this section here. So it's easy for someone to tack you down and go ahead and just mow through it, but that requires a friend or a licensed therapist. So how do we attack that ourselves? And here's what we've come up with. This is a, an important fix, and uh, this represents uh, some good thinking on a lot of good people's parts. Now look, what ends up happening is that in this position, I can get my shoulder back where it belongs, I can tack that anterior delt down, and I've got just the clip at the end of the, the barbell here. And that allows me to get a little more gription, and also allows me to press in here and create some friction. Oh my, Whew. leopard save me. And what ends up happening is because I can tack, it's just like flossing. I, am, I basically am creating an idealized shoulder position, and then I should be able to pull those tissues past that spot. And all I need to do is just camp out here for a second, anchor, and just pull past, and I'll find that I'm in this anterior delt region, the biceps, I can kind of just move that around, and then anchor, and I should just pull past. And the idea is not to just hang out at end range, but to kind of worry those tissues in half. And uh, so I'm just going to oscillate back and forth, take myself to end range, and keep winding up, and just unglue this anterior delt head, and you're going to see how shockingly ropey that gets. And think about yourself sleeping all night long on your shoulder, shoulder comes forward. You can even see that anterior delt is like trying to squeeze your shoulder back. Now look at the difference in my interrotation. Now this is my right side, which is my stiff side, and I've got a ton more, and that's just an effect of soft tissue. Getting those t that are basically that humerus to be able to slide underneath that tissue mass. Now if you're living off your shoulders, you cannot believe how short and ropey this is. And adding that weight I don't know if you've got one of those 500-pound Donnie Thompson, Mark Bell Wolf bars. You probably don't, but that's enough to be able to anchor the shoulder down and tack through it. Worth, worth, worth doing. So that's homework number one. I want a whopping five minutes aside, okay? The second piece to that is we've got to take our lacrosse ball. I'm going to go ahead and put that in my pec minor. Now look, if my shoulder comes forward into this open circuit faulted position, and my body's going to try to close it down, like, oh, that's unstable, but I still got your back to start at. And so what ends up happening is that these tissues get brutally short. One of the mechanisms for why we kind of see all the tweaks that happen in people's sternums when they do ring dips is that now the pec is pulling that sternum in a really, really bad position. It pulls it off axis. We'll do a, a mobility wad about that coming up here. But in the meantime, I want to get that shoulder back so I can improve functioning. But if I'm short, this tissue gets short. I put myself into a good position. I'm going to place that ball into that pec minor, and then pec minor-ish area. Turn the head like you're going to cough, and then I want you to go to town in those soft tissues. Now, if you've got a little bit bigger ball, that's even better, but this will work for starters, and I can really even roll up onto the head of that shoulder. I can try to pull my hand into that tight position, keep exaggerating those corners, unglue all the way through, a, a kind of right underneath that clavicle here, and then uh, where is that um, supernova? Let's take a look at this. A little bit bigger ball. Does that say mobility one on it? That's so weird. Put that big ball right here. Now, oh, that's the pressure I'm looking for. 
to be able to really open up some of those tissues. Grinding through there, opening that up, you get the idea. So, four or five minutes aside, untacking, hit that thing, two or three minutes, soft tissue addition, see how that imp impacts and affects your internal rotation, and good lord, you're going to PR on your snaps tomorrow. We'll build you a lot, we'll see you tomorrow.